Hi guys, in this video I'm going to give a statistical introduction to factor analysis, which will hopefully give a good and complete overview of the topic. This video will try to summarize the important points from chapter 9 of this book, Applied Multivariate Statistical Analysis. There is also this book called Modern Factor Analysis, and this is a whole book, uh, a statistic book, dedicated to this topic, so it goes much deeper. If you want to learn more, you should probably check this out. Okay, so what is the goal of factor analysis? The goal is to find common factors, denoted by F, that affects a set of variables, denoted by X. In a sense, it's a form of dimensionality reduction, very similar to PCA, but it's not exactly PCA. There is a slight nuance regarding the dimensionality reduction. So PCA is more data oriented. It reduces the dimension, usually to project the data into this lower dimension without necessarily making sense of these new dimensions. So what do we want in PCA? We want to lower the dimension of the data. Factor analysis is more model oriented. It reduces the dimension, but we don't care so much about projecting the data, but rather more about the meaning of these new dimensions. What do they represent? So what do we want in factor analysis? We want a model that can explain the data. In addition, there's also, of course, different mathematical formulations. So PCA tries to find new axes which maximize the variance of the data. Factor analysis tries to find latent variables known as common factors that explain the data best by some hypothesized model. Factor analysis, in a sense, includes PCA because one of the ways of finding the latent variables in factor analysis is by doing PCA. But this is not true vice versa. PCA does not include factor analysis in it. In PCA, there's only one solution. In factor analysis, there can be infinite solutions due to the ability to rotate at any solution that we have. But nonetheless, and given all that I said, doing PCA or doing factor analysis often lead to very similar results. So here are some examples of doing factor analysis. X could be, for example, scores on various tests, and F can be different types of intelligence. And if I'm not mistaken, this was the original application used by Spearman, which was maybe the first person who developed factor analysis. There were other people who came after him who developed it more, but I think he was the first one. Another example is that X is a set of psychological questions, and F are personality traits. And if I'm not mistaken, again, the big five personality traits were discovered using factor analysis. So if you ever heard of the big five personality traits, well, you owe them to statistics and factor analysis. Another example, X could be, X could be a set of different stock prices and F could be different industries. For example, uh, tech industry, agriculture industry, energy industry, etc. Okay, so in factor analysis, the model that we assume is a linear model. Yeah, so we have a set of variables X that have P variables in them. And each of these variables, we say that it's actually a linear combination of M factors, usually where M is much smaller than P, plus an intercept term, which will be just the uh, mean of that variable, and plus some other influence, which could be attributed to the specific variable or to some noise, etc. So this is how we would write it in an algebraic manner. In vector matrix notation, we would write it like this, X minus mu is equal to L dot f plus epsilon x is in this case a vector with p components or variables mu is the mean of x epsilon is the specific factor f are the common factors this is a vector of size m usually m again is much smaller than p and l is this matrix of coefficients uh, which we call the loading matrix also known as the pattern matrix and basically it's how much each variable loads into the factor or vice versa, how much each factor affects each variable. And quite often there is a diagram that shows the relations between the factors and the variables. So we could have a bunch of variables and then there could be some factors which affect these variables. And actually each variable is some combination of factors. Um, sometimes the arrows are drawn in reverse to show maybe the loading instead of the effects. And sometimes these specific factors are not shown. But yeah, this is how a typical graph might look like. Let's look a bit closer at this equation. At the first glance, it might remind some of you of regression. So this is how factor analysis looks like. This is the equation of regression. But yeah, factor analysis and regressions are very different. 
In regression, y is usually just one dimension, but here x is multi-dimension. Uh, There's p equations here. So it also means that in regression, the coefficients, all the betas here are just a vector, but in factor analysis, the coefficients are a matrix. But you could say, okay, uh, have you ever heard of general linear model or general multivariate regression model? Uh, here we have multivariate y, okay? But in regression, we actually have the x. So these x's are actually known. But in factor analysis, the f's are not known. We, are, we have no idea what they are. They are a theoretical construct. They are not observable, but we hypothesize that they exist and we try to estimate them. And also it's a different task altogether. So if we talk in machine learning terms, regression is a supervised task. You have the X's and you have the Y's, you have the labels, you have some ground truth values that you can compare your model to these ground truth values. Whereas factor analysis is an unsupervised task, you can't compare your model to some ground truth model. You can measure it in other ways, but you can say, oh, my model really doesn't make mistakes because there is nothing to compare your model to. Okay, so these are the differences between factor analysis and regression. The most simple factor analysis model is the orthogonal model, and it makes some additional assumptions. So it makes the assumptions that the mean of F the mean of all the common factors are zero, and the variance of f, the variance of the common factors, these latent variables, is the identity matrix, meaning that the common factors are orthogonal. There is no correlation between the common factors. Likewise, for the specific factors, we assume that their mean is zero and that their variance is a diagonal matrix. We could have also alternatively assumed that their covariance matrix is the identity and then add some coefficients to them. This is just two different ways of representing the same thing. Also, we assume that the covariance between uh, the epsilons and the f is equal to zero. So the common and specific factors are independent of each other. The reason this equality holds is because it should have been this, but this is zero and this is zero. So it's just equal to this. Okay, given these assumptions, we could calculate the covariance structure of X. So we could calculate the variance covariance matrix of X. Uh, we will denote it by capital Sigma. It's just equal to this thing over here. If we now plug instead of X minus mu, the model that we assume, the linear model. So L times F plus epsilon, we get this. If we open the parenthesis, we get this. If, if we now distribute the expected value to the actual random variables here, we will get these, and now this is zero and this is zero by the assumptions. This is the identity matrix by the assumptions, and this is equal to some diagonal matrix, which we call Psi, capital Psi. So overall, we got that the variance of X is equal to L times L transpose plus Psi. Looking at the diagonals on both sides, so the diagonal of this matrix will give the variance of each variable. So Sigma squared of some a variable, let's say the jth variable. And if we look at this side, we will get this thing over here. These are from the L times L transpose, and this is from the Psi. And now looking at the right-hand side, these terms over here, the terms that come from the L times L transpose, we will name them communality, and we'll interpret them as the portion of the variance contributed by the M common factors. And this thing over here, we will name it uniqueness. And this is the portion of the variance that is not due to communality. It's actually due to some specific factor. So some influence that comes from this specific variable, a specific factor that is related to this variable and perhaps some noise or measurement error. Okay, so we can decompose the variance into a communality variance that is due to the common factors and uniqueness variance that is not due to the common factors. Now we can also calculate the covariance between X and F. So between the vector of variables and the vector of factors, and the covariance of this is equal to the covariance of this because adding or subtracting a constant doesn't change the covariance. This thing, we just put the model instead of it. This thing is equal to this minus zero times zero because the expected value of F is zero, the expected value of this is zero. And then distributing the expected value, we get this. 
this is equal to zero, we said that the epsilon and the f's are uncorrelated, they have no covariance between them, and this is equal to the identity matrix, so we got that the covariance between x and f is equal to l, to the l matrix.